Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Uh, racing season is kind of winding down, so, uh, well, the tractors are starting to break again. Anyway, let's have a look at what we got here. This here is a 1949 Ferguson TE20. Um, it's a little different than my TEA20. Uh, basically, the engine is different. This one's got a Z120 Continental, and mine's got a... a standard motor corp vanguard engine in it uh, aside from that pretty much the same machine anyway belongs to one of my neighbors and poor fella is at his wits end this thing just refuses to run it'll start up and cough and sputter for a few seconds and then quit and then, and that's what it's doing and he can't seem to figure it out he's tried different carburetors changed all the tune-up parts the fuel uh, system is clean and seems to be flowing well so anyway I went over to his place and tried to help him with it, but um, it's just easier for it to be in my shop where I can get at my tools and stuff and diagnose it more easily. So here's what she does. Choke on. I got to fix that to the, um, the friction disc on the throttle lever is not that great. That's all we get out of her. She's just hitting on a couple of cylinders and it'll, oh, put the choke in. And then she quits. So there's a few things we're going to try. Just cover the basics first. Um, we're going to check, double check the fuel flow. I'm going to bypass the fuel system completely and go with a, a little auxiliary thing that I've got made up and try and run it that way and make sure that's not the problem. And we'll go through it step by step till we get to the root of it. What I've done now, I've removed the fuel tank, I've removed the air cleaner. So um, anything outside of the engine on this side has been eliminated as a possible cause. I took off the aftermarket carburetor. I've never had any luck with them at all. And put the original one back on. We've got fresh fuel in there. While I was at it, I took the spark plugs out. They're clean. I gave it a compression test. It's got 120 in every hole. So that's good. What else I did, I drilled and tapped for 1 8 pipe in the intake manifold. And I've put on a vacuum gauge. Now I'm going to see if I can get this thing to start. I did manage to get it running like this, but um, I couldn't keep it running long enough that I could grab the camera and show you the vacuum gauge, but the vacuum gauge was bouncing all over the place, which is usually a pretty good sign that you've got some valve issues. And I've thought all along, that's what's wrong with this tractor. We've just tried... We've tried everything and it, it, the engine should have responded to something if, you know, the condenser was bad or the carburetor was no good. But nothing we do makes it run any different, um, and including this, you know, remote fuel system. The owner um, was concerned that maybe it, it was a fuel flow issue, but I didn't think so. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to at least pull the manifold off and we're going to have a look and see maybe the manifold gasket is blown or something. Uh, we'll have a look at that. One thing I did do, I took the carburetor from that little Ferguson, and I put it on my 488N here, start right up, and it runs like a champ. So we know the carburetor is not to blame. I didn't think it was since, uh, like I said, the engine exhibited the same symptoms with two different carburetors on it. But now we know for sure it's not the problem. So we're just now going to go over the basics. It was exhibiting symptoms, in my, in my opinion, of a valve job or um, a big intake manifold leak or a vacuum leak of some sort. So um, what I did, I, I've stripped it down this far. I wanted to have a look inside here and, and make sure that the valves weren't all carboned up. Because sometimes they'll get carboned up so badly that it that it 
the engine can't can't get enough air in or exhaust out and it starts to run very poorly um, not the case with this everything looked good inside there I looked down with my my little borescope uh, camera thingy another thing we did um, you know something to do with valve sealing is a valve lash so I went ahead and lashed the valves and I found that on every cylinder the intake valves were tight and I found that odd but um, that can can present a problem and and you can have tight valves and cranking it and doing a compression test like I did uh, yesterday it all comes up rosy but as soon as it starts running that's when everything changes as soon as the valves get the slightest bit of heat in them they expand and that tight valve becomes a valve that's not closing so um, we may have stumbled on something there what I'm gonna do now all right so a fast check for a manifold is you just grab a file and run it up and down like that and, and see what it touches and doesn't touch this one to me seems seems pretty good you can also put a straight edge across it and start with a, a you know a one and a half thou feeler gauge but this I'm pretty sure is close enough to, to, to seal up I'm gonna go over the ignition and make sure everything there is is good and how it should be um, this this could be uh, suspect too you know there's but to me it just does not seem like an ignition problem I've had plenty of ignition problems in my day and this does not seem like like a weak spark ignition problem uh, it, it could be a a good spark in some cylinders and no spark in other cylinders problem Th that'll exhibit these type of symptoms too now we're testing the spark plugs and I found a big surprise there's only one that works <laughs> that that could be part of the problem so I'll show you how you test them you take the distributor cap and rotor and the, the plugs and everything out just to get them out of the way and then we hook a jumper wire from the output side of our ignition coil and you connect that to the uh, electrode side or the, the I guess the high tension side of your spark plug and then we just ground the body of it to earth now when I turn this thing over you should see a nice hot spark in there in that gap and I'll show you what we see nothing oh a little bit when it stops so I'm gonna get a good one and show you what a good one looks like here we go that watch this this is nice hot blue sparks see that that's what you're supposed to see when you turn it over. That one had some random little orange ones popping after the ignition was turned off and the engine was slowing down or after the starter was disengaged. I'm not sure what that was all about, but they weren't even hot sparks. So I went ahead and I bought four new spark plugs and we're going to test them before we put them in. All right, all of our, all four of our new plugs are properly gapped to 25 thousandths. And as you can see, that's the fourth one. They all work as they should. I have no idea what happened to make all those other ones go bad. Um, sometimes spark plugs, if you if you drop them on the floor, that'll wreck the insides of them. Or I guess sometimes they can just be bad out of the package. I don't know, but that was really weird out of seven spark plugs to have four bad ones. Anyway, these ones are all good. We're going to go ahead and put them back in the engine. Another thing I don't like is how the ignition... Uh, resistor has been bypassed we'll I'll show you how to figure all that all out what it needs and if it should have one or not etc once I know the thing runs oh there we go we got it running I'm just waiting for it to run out of gas and I could take this can off and then we'll go over this electrical yeah, you, she should quit any second now So we've got our uh, 10 amp uh, amp meter in line with the ignition and the coil and you can see it's drawing around 3 amps which is fine so that says we don't really need the ballast resistor in this case uh, 3, 3.5 three that, that's okay that's what you're aiming for. I've brought it out back now and I'm going to show you some of the differences between the TE that that one is and the TEA which this one is 
mostly the difference is the engine. Whoop. This one here uses the British Standard Corporation engine, whereas that one uses a Continental Z120. And some of the difference you can see on this one, you'll see that the the oil pan is cast aluminum, and it's it's a struck it's a stressed member, a structural part of the tractor. Whereas you can see on the Continental here, it's got a stamped steel oil pan, and they transfer the they transfer the load of the axle bolster back to here through this, and that's actually adjustable. Um, this has got a Lucas distributor because it's it, even though it's a Continental engine, it was made in England. The T020 that was made in Detroit has the same Continental Z120 engine, but it has um, all Delco stuff on it. Aside from that, I mean, the engines themselves are very similar. They're both overhead valve. And the easy way to tell them if you're junkyard crawling or something, you see the oil filter on the, on the angle like that. That's a sure sign that it's a, it's a British standard engine. The distributors go in slightly differently. You can see on this one, it doesn't even have an oil filter. Uh -huh. Whereas the American Continental, uh, it does have an oil filter and it's, it's, it's straight up and down. Um, as far as swapping, mixing and matching, the bolt pattern on the bell housing is different. So if you want to put, say you had a, a TEA with a blown engine, but you had a good Continental, you need the transmission from a TE because the TEA engine and the TE engine, uh, they, they have different bell housing bolt patterns. So, I mean, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. From here back to the same, you'll notice the TE, it's like a 9N. It's got a, um, it gets its air, there's a, there's a louvered cap on top of the air cleaner. Whereas the TEA pulls it through this vent on the dash. Just really minor, minor differences. But anyway, that, that's about it, I guess. They're actually quite, quite similar. Other thing you'll notice is this one uses a, a Zenith, uh, what is that? A 24T2 carburetor. And that one uses a Marvel Schlebler, Marvel Schlebler, like a Ford. Um, also, the TE, the Continental, you'll see here, it just has a simple draft tube to vent the crankcase. Whereas the TEA actually has a um, positively vented crankcase, like a, like a modern car. You know, it's got a, this goes up to the top of the valve cover and there's actually a little PCV valve in there. And it pulls fresh air from the air cleaner through this. It's actually uh, pretty neat for the early 1950s. Well, there's another job well done. We were able to get the old Ferguson back up running again. And I could take it back over to my neighbor's place and he'll be happy because he's got a few jobs backlogged that he's been waiting on getting done while this thing uh, was testing his patience. Um, I have many times over the years run into a, a, a miss, a bad plug wire, a bad plug, a crack distributor cap, all kinds of stuff like that. But this was a first for me. Out of four spark plugs, only one was really actually working. The other uh, two of them were dead and one of them was sort of working half the time. That is a, a, a strange one for me. Now, um, it has happened to me one time before with a bad plug on a Ferguson and it was the same kind of plugs that was in this. I'm not going to say anything more than that. We all have our preference about spark plugs and oil filters and stuff like that. But anyway, um, that's, that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.